In this problem, we're told a baseball is hit with a speed of 27 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees. It lands on the flat roof of a 13 meter tall nearby building. If the ball was hit when it was one meter above the ground, what horizontal distance does it travel before it lands on the building? So I, draw, I drew a diagram of what's going on here. So we have this guy and he's throwing this baseball and we know he's throwing it one meter above the ground and he's throwing it at an angle of 45 degrees and it's gonna travel 27 meters per second and then when he throws it, it's going to land on this 13 meter tall building. So this is just a diagram of what's going on. And they tell us to find the horizontal distance it travels before it lands on the building. So this is essentially what we're trying to find, this horizontal distance, right? The distance uh, it travels before landing on this building. So we're trying to find this. I'm going to call it delta x. So whenever we do two-dimensional problems like this, it's important to write down our given. So let's write down what we're given. And we have to write it down in the x direction and in the y direction. So let's start with the x-direction. So what do we know about the x-direction? Well, we always assume, unless told differently, that acceleration is 0 meters per second squared, right? Because there's no acceleration in the x-direction because they don't tell us. v sub 0, uh, we don't know, but we can solve for it, right? So we're going to use uh, vectors, right, to solve for this. We're going to find the horizontal component and the vertical component. So we don't know it yet, but we're going to solve for it. Uh, so we don't know v sub 0 yet. And v, uh, we don't know v, we don't know the final velocity. Uh, delta x, right, our change in x is exactly what we're solving for. So once we find that, we're done, but we don't know it yet. And then time, we also don't know. So time, we don't know. So let's start with, let's uh, move on to y. So y, acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. You always assume there's a force of gravity acting on this, right, because we're on Earth. And the force of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we just had the minus because it's going downwards. Uh, v sub 0. Uh, we don't know this either yet, but we can solve for it. So I'm just going to put question mark for now. The final velocity we don't know. Uh, the change in the y we do know. right? So think about it. We start at 1 meter. So the ball is starting here, and then it lands here. So what is the change in y? You calculate the change in y by your final position in the y direction minus uh, your initial position. So if our final position is here, 13 meters, and our starting one is 1, we just do 13 minus 1, right? So final versus starting, that's going to give you 12. So it changes 12 meters, and it's positive because we go up, right? We don't go down. So delta y is that. And then time, we don't know either. So we don't know time. Uh, but now we've got both of our givens in the x and y direction. So let's go ahead and solve for v sub 0. So if you're given an angle like this and you're given... Uh, some vector, what you want to do is find the vertical and horizontal. So how do we go about doing that? Well, if you imagine this like a triangle, uh, we know that the sine of our angle, 45 degrees, is going to be equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite of this angle is going to be y, right? I'll call this y, I'll call this x. And so uh, y divided by the hypotenuse, right? So opposite over hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is 27. So if we want to solve for y, uh, y is going to be equal to 27 times the sine of 45. And we can do the exact same thing for cosine. So the cosine of 45 is going to be equal to, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if this is our angle. The adjacent side is this one, x. And then our hypotenuse is 27. So x over 27, if we want to solve for it, uh, it's going to be 27 times the cosine of 45. And so these are going to be our initial velocities, right? Because our vector is a velocity, so... Uh, if you plug this in your calculator, you're going to get the, the same exact value, right? And you can tell because they're both 45 degrees and they have the 27 out front. So they're both going to be 19.09, and then this is in meters per second, right? Because it's velocity. So 19.09 meters per second. So that's going to be each of those. So let's write that down. So 19... Here, let me erase this. So 19... 0.09 meters per second and they're both the same so uh, let me try and write this in 19.09 meters per second so now we've got this and the formula we're going to use to solve this is basically the main one you use when doing two-dimensional kinematics and uh, it's going to be delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus one half uh, a t squared and so this is going to be the formula you're going to use. Delta y can be delta x. It depends on the direction you're trying to solve for it in. So in this case, uh, notice how we don't really have any x's, so we can't really do much. But with the y, what we can do is solve for t, right? Because we have delta y, we have v sub 0, 
and we have uh, or we have delta y, we have v sub zero, and we have a. So what we can do is solve for the time uh, it takes to get to the end, right? So let's go ahead and solve by plugging in our things. So delta y is going to be twelve, which equals v sub zero, nineteen point zero nine, times t, plus one half times a, which is minus 9.8 times t squared. So you should get that 12 equals 19.09 times t plus one half of minus 9.8. Uh, you're gonna get minus 4.9. So this is just minus 4.9 t squared. And if you wanna solve this, uh, notice that this is like a quadratic form. So move the minus 12 to the other side. So it's really just gonna be this minus 12. I can move this out front, but just recognize that it's quadratic. And with this, what you can do is uh, your teacher's probably going to let you use a graphing calculator on your test. I would grab this in your calculator and then see where it crosses zero. And those are going to be the points uh, for t. So those are going to be your times uh, it takes uh, for it to cross uh, the 12, right? So if we go ahead and solve this, you plug this in your calculator, you're going to get that t equals 0 0.0788 seconds and 3.108 seconds. So you might be wondering why we have two values, but I'm gonna try and explain that. So what this solves for is when we cross 12. So if you notice, we're gonna cross 12 two times, right? Or the ch when the change in y is 12. So really crossing 13, because we start at one, but it's gonna, the first one is here, right? So that's the 0.788 seconds. So it takes that much time. And then this one, the last one is when we actually cross it at the end. So the real value we're gonna use is this one, 3.108. So that's the real value of t. So for these, they're going to be the same. So 3.108 seconds, uh, it's going to be the same for this one. And so that's going to be the amount of time. And now that we have the time, what we can do is solve for x, right? Because uh, we have, we're trying to find delta x, right? So this is delta x. And think about what we have. We have v sub 0. We have t. And then a, we also have. So what we can do is solve. So delta x is going to be equal to v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared, right? We've got every variable. We just have to plug it in. So we're trying to solve for delta x. We know it equals the velocity, which is 19.09, or the initial velocity times the time, 3.108 seconds plus 1 half. And then notice a is 0. So if we plug in 0 to this, uh, right, and then we plug in t, it's all going to become 0. So right? Because zero times anything is zero. So really, we're just adding zero. So it's plus zero, doesn't do anything. So delta x is basically just going to be our initial velocity times the time, since there's no acceleration acting on it. So delta x is going to be equal to 19.09 times 3.108. Uh, if you go ahead and do this, you should get 59.33. So keep in mind, this is going to be meters, right? Because velocity is in meters. Uh, acceleration is meters per second or velocity is meters per second, acceleration is meters per second squared. So delta x is going to be equal to 59.33 meters. Uh, I'm going to round to the tenths place, so 59.3, then it's in meters, correct? So the distance it travels before it lands on the building is going to be 59.3 meters. And so that's how you solve this problem.